don't know what it is, but there's something quite magical. Getting up first thing in the morning and heading off to your local woodland and just wandering around looking for things of interest to photograph. Interesting compositions, interesting light, just interesting subjects and shapes. Nothing beats it. Look at this, and I'm the only person here. Wow. Right then, so this video, I just decided to get up first thing this morning and head off to my local woodland and just wander around and I just really wanted to blow off the cobwebs. What's that noise? Just blow off the cobwebs. I've not been out vlogging for quite a while. Not what I consider to be a normal vlog. Anyway, I'm heading off to Scotland on the weekend. I'll make a couple of vlogs while I'm there, of course. But I just wanted to do something this week. So I'm at my local woodland, I'm wandering around, I'm just looking. Got a bit of a huff and puff on by the way. I've been walking for about an hour and of course stopping to do a bit of b-roll as well and in a second i'm going to venture off this damn path because wandering around a path is not really not really fun is it so this video a little bit of woodland photography and at the end of this video i'm going to photograph the most amazing mill Beautiful reflections, I've photographed it many, many times, but I've never vlogged it before. So I'm gonna wander through the woods, heading towards the mill, and hopefully I can grab one or two nice woodland images and culminating in, hopefully, a nice image of the mill. So that's it, really. I'm looking forward to this, I really am. is that I can hear over my huffing and puffing but it's just terrific it really is terrific now for the purpose of this vlog I want to come away with one or two I don't know why I'm whispering <laughs> it's only me here <laughs> but for the purpose of this exercise I want to come away with one or two nice images of course but this is one of these mornings where I'm just taking it all in just absorbing nature in all its glory and it's one of these mornings where you think to yourself, do you know what, if I come home, or if I go back home without any pictures at all, the morning is already worth it. It's just worth being out here. What a gorgeous, gorgeous still morning. Fantastic. I'm loving this already. Anyway, guys, enough of my witterings off the beaten path. And all that's left me to say is morning, guys, and welcome to this week's video. Let me just explain to you how I go about finding compositions in woodlands or how I attempt to find compositions in woodlands. Well, I suppose it's about just keeping a beady eye out for anything of interest. Now, something can be quite boring and mundane, but put a kick of light on it, something that you could possibly walk past time and time again could really look interesting. And there's such a thing there behind me. If I just turn the camera on, I'm not sure if you could just see about there. There's a fallen over tree or part of a tree laden with moss and the light is just kicking off it that's the sort of thing now it's not always something like that you're looking for but that's a good starter i can't walk past this now without looking and looking again to see if i can work it and uh, and find some form of composition
I don't know if this is floating my boat or not. It's nice, it's interesting, but I think that's probably as far as I go with it. It's, I think the biggest problem for me when I'm faced with things like this, it's too busy. It's too busy because there's a far cry from just taking a picture for the sake of taking a picture and creating a picture that works on more than a snapshot level. Hopefully I'm making myself clear and understood there. Get away, spiders. Um, but more often than not, the best way to tell, really, is to get your camera on a tripod and look through the viewfinder because more often than not we see things very differently with our own eyes it's very difficult to home in with your own eyes and what I mean by that is from here the human eye has quite a peripheral vision so I could see the whole thing I could see all around it I could see these branches close to me but throw a camera on a tripod or up to your eye and look through the viewfinder and it could be a very different thing very very different sometimes for the better sometimes not so and that already is looking a lot more interesting than i first thought So there's a lesson for you. If you're struggling to find compositions in the woods, throw your camera on your tripod, look through your viewfinder, or look on your live screen, or of course hold the camera up to your eye. Now my camera's out, my camera will remain out of my bag uh, for the rest of the day now, and I'll wander around, And because sometimes you could just stand in one area. I've mentioned it before on uh, videos, yeah, especially when it comes to finding and hunting for compositions in the woods and just hold it up to your eye and wander around because sometimes you could surprise yourself now this one here for instance again you know <laughs> i've said it a million times an award winner it certainly ain't but a nice picture and certainly a nice start to the day it definitely is I'm not sure it's going to make that much of a difference but i've just put my polarizer on the front of the lens just to see if it'll make these colours pop a little bit more. There's no direct sunlight to talk of. And everything is quite dry. I like the polarizer when things are wet. I think that works quite nice. If you are struggling with your compositions in woodlands, let me just give you a little bit of a tip, and that's just work to rules of thirds. I know it's, it's you might think it sounds cliched, but you can't go wrong. Like I said earlier, a world beater this isn't, but I've managed to capture quite a nice frame just by using the main, let's do it that way, the main tree here runs across the third on the left hand side, tilting out the screen ever so slightly, which is natural because the camera is level. And where the tree is falling down and leaning against the stood up tree, that's right on the intersection of the rules of thirds. And of course, everything is from left moving to the right into the frame and it just works it just works so don't be one of these people that says right i'm not going to conform i'm not going to shoot everything to rules of thirds break the rules yes i'm 100 percent with you on that but don't break the rules for the sake of breaking the rules That's not a bad start to the morning, not a bad start at all.
So this is definitely a place that I'm gonna to have to work to within an inch of its life because already that just looks terrific. Look at that lighting. Look at that green, green and more green. Green moss, it's being backlit. Just terrific. So my first competition will be in landscape orientation. I'm probably going to use the tree, the large tree on the right, large tree on the left as a natural frame with the overhanging branches dropping down right down there because uh, it's slightly off center in the foreground. I think that is, I think that will definitely make for a nice shot. And I probably want to do more with the tree on the left hand side. So let's take a closer look at that. I either want to zoom in. Let's see if we are in focus, one second. I might want to zoom in a little bit closer like that, or probably I'm gonna to prefer to shoot um, maybe in portrait orientation, something like that. Again, again, look, um, where's my finger? Bottom left hand third, up top third, branching out, quite nice. I don't, don't want too much of that sky in there. I'll check my history and make sure nothing's overexposed. I might even drop a neutral density filter just to reduce some of that light down in the sky a little bit further. And if I just turn my polarizer, can see all the luscious green in the background, turn my polarizer to take that effect off and you could see that rich, dark, deep green just disappears. Let's pop it back in. Very nice. I think that would probably make for a nice image. So I've got my settings back on there again. I'm at uh, one second exposure, F8 at ISO 200. One thing I will advise if you're out and about looking for compositions in the woods is to just take your time, walk slowly. Don't try and, don't try and route march it, not unless the woodlands you're walking through is really open and vast. If you come to a thick woodland like this, I, I bet I haven't walked 500 yards in probably three hours that I've been here. I haven't, I've just, I've just taken my time and I'm just wandering slowly but surely and constantly looking and looking and looking, looking forwards and looking back. But it's amazing. Um, the things that present themselves if you're prepared to open your eyes and look. This dead tree here, for instance, there's all these, I'm gonna say mushrooms, I don't know what they are, but they're just delightful. And what a fantastic subject these things make. I'm saying these things, apologize uh, for anybody out there that's really into this sort of thing, but I'm not sure if they're mushrooms or toadstools or whatever they are, they might even be a disease to this tree, doesn't matter because the tree's dead anyway, but there's a small clump. There's obviously thousands of them all over this dead tree here, but there is a particular small clump that I've got my eye on where they look in pristine condition, but unfortunately I don't have my macro lens with me. Now, I actually took my macro lens out of my bag this morning, which is really quite frustrating because I don't normally carry it around with me when I'm out shooting woodland photography or landscape photography per se. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's my local wood, so I'm definitely going to come back here with my macro lens and grab these. Um, I'm sure some of you guys will tell me exactly what they are in the comment section below. What a fantastic subject. So the point I was making was take your time. Don't route march. Walk stop look walk stop look but before i go 
There must be a shot in here I can grab. There must be something. 200 mil, zoomed in. The problem is with your 70 to 200 mil lens, it's great, but you can't focus that close. Not as close as I'd like to focus anyway. But uh, yeah, I'll grab a shot all the same. Did you see that? That was a little tiny field mouse. Just scurried across the path. Oh, that's not something you see every day. That's not something that you see every day. It was a much longer than expected trek to get to where I currently am, which is this amazing place here. Look at that for a mill. How awesome is that? I've got a real sweat on. Not sure if you've noticed today, but um, I think pretty much all the pictures I've taken are with my 70 to 200 mm lens. Now, it's not always the case, but more often than not, it's my go-to lens when it comes to woodland photography. Now, that's a bit of a weird uh, statement to make because woodland photography is usually about vast open areas and you know the bigger picture generally. And obviously, I generally encourage people to take the bigger picture, but you can get so intimate with a 70 to 200 mil lens but also when you walk through the woodlands if you start looking differently if you can try and zoom in and imagine what a tighter crop would look like then more often than not it'll work really really well and that's obviously where the 70 to 200 mil lens comes in throw it on your camera pick your camera up to your eye and just have a wander have a have a look around zoom in, zoom out, and honestly, compositions will just start to present themselves. And this is exactly what I mean about trying to see in a, in a very different way. Just actually wandering back to the car now, and I'm looking up into the canopy just for oddball shapes, and I just saw an oddball shaped branch again, covered in green moss, looks really lovely, backlit. Um, I'm really gonna have to slow that shutter speed down to brighten that image up but again it's a very intimate shot and it's a shot that I guarantee most people will just walk past and not see and seriously look and that's at 70 mil so even at 70 mil it's still it looks very chaotic and you're probably wondering what on earth I can see but zoom in to 200 mil get really close and look at that 
Look at that oddball shape, the veins, the backlit green moss. It's just terrific. Oh, it's just, honestly, I just so love that. And these are very often compositions that photographers will overlook. My favorite of the day, possibly. That's it, I'm bloody knackered. It's amazing how knackered uh, you get or how quickly you can lose your fitness just by not going out and about on a regular basis. So that's a lesson to all of us, although I've been working like crazy, hence the reason I've not been out vlogging uh, regularly. Uh, I just wanted to blow the cobwebs off before I head north um, up in Scotland around the Murray Shire coast, I think, heading there on Sunday. So I should make a couple of vlogs and uh, I'll get them out to you as soon as I possibly can. Right, do me a favor, if you've enjoyed this content, help support the channel, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to find your way back, then consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell as well. And if you are new here, I've got a fairly substantial back catalog that you might find of interest. Well, there might be a video or two there that you might be interested in. So until the next time, guys, cheers, thank you.